Good morning, beloved, and welcome once again to walking through the Word. And as you can tell by way of recording this video, we are not the only ones awake at this early hour. We have a few of our neighbor, neighbor friends, four-legged friends, uh, serenading us this morning. <laughs> I think they're on an invisible fence, however, so they'll not be joining us. But they're, <laughs> they're just all part of God's creation. We thank you again for uh, joining us. We're walking down a bit of uh, memory lane this morning and uh, certainly enjoying the aroma, if you would, of how uh, the bread of heaven that by faith I believe will be shared with my soul and I trust with thine as well. Let's pray this morning. May we? Father, we thank you that just as your son did when he walked down the road with those disciples who knew not who it was that was walking with them, but when he joined them, after having spoke to them and he disappeared from their presence they recollected Lord of how their hearts burned within them oh father our cold hearts my cold sometimes encumbered heart needs the burning that only thy spirit can bring through thy word and Lord, by faith and through Thy Spirit, we humble ourselves this morning and we ask that Thou wouldest walk alongside of us this morning and so we hush ourselves in Thy presence as we listen to Thy Word both now and in times to come. May You instruct us and we yield to thee Lord we are a stubborn lot sometimes we're so busy about the wrong things but Father I pray that that one thing that is needful to be a Jesus feet is the choice that we will make Please bless us with thy presence and speak to us thy servants in Jesus Christ's name we ask it for thy glory alone amen as we come to the second chapter in this wonderful book of the Revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing could be more timely, more needful, more therapeutic, more medicinal, more instructional, and perhaps more helpful to local churches and its members, of which I am one, than the words that have been preserved for us since the foundation of the world, perhaps before the foundation of the world, yes, forever settled in heaven. The only place perhaps unsettled they are, are in our hearts. May God by His Spirit, stir up the, plow up, if you would, the rocky soil of our heart and allow His Word to fall on good ground. John has a message here from the Lord to the first church. 
again, you heard me say, and I'm going down memory road. I was looking before the recording of this audio at a little private Facebook group of alumni from the little Bible college that I had opportunity, my wife and I, to attend back many, many years ago and looking for a gentleman whom I woke up, I've alluded to it in a previous journey of walking through the Word. I woke Gray Anderson up, whom I haven't seen for... Have mercy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 33 years, something like that. I woke him up at 4 a.m. and said, Gray, I think I know what God wants me to do for the rest of my life. I spoke those words. <laughs> Some would say as a foolish... 20 year old 21 year old perhaps time escapes me but not knowing that the calling of God and the gifts of God are without repentance God does not change his mind when he gives a prophet a preacher a teacher a parent a businessman when when he places a burden a calling a desire upon someone when it is God originated and sent, that fire burns eternally in our hearts and in our life until our race is run. And then, as it did with Moses, it passes on to another generation, to a Joshua, that Lord willing, we have had opportunity to train a Timothy from a Paul from Christ to his disciples, to his ch local church members, if you would. Paul records for, forgive me, John records for us here in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Now, we all must be good students of the scripture and if I err unknowingly may God help me may he help us all to rightly divide the word of truth so that it may be correctly applied to our lives at this juncture my understanding is the angel is the pastor the under shepherd of that church so often my pastor said you're either going to pastor a church or help someone pastor a church so John records faithfully he's been instructed to write and to send this letter to these churches and here's here's the first here's the first note the first letter the first church there will be a recipient of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Write, thank God for his written word to pastor and people alike. You can see, you can see John. If ever well, there was a time that a man needed a writing instrument <laughs> and to be prepared it was this time. One thing that my dear pastor made a habit of is always kept a pen nearby and pad of paper so that when God, by His Spirit, spoke to him, not in some type of scriptural revelation, because God's Word is settled, we have no need of additional revelation of extra books or writings, if you would, from God, but we have the Holy Spirit of God within us that can prompt us, that can speak to us, that can bring up to memory scriptures and the Word of God applicable to our circumstance. And can, as he did to fill up in the Ethiopian eunuch, can prompt us to go join thyself, go and preach the gospel to someone. You can't tell me that someone as big as God that lives within you 
can't prompt you, can't speak to you. That is the, the you must weigh it all out with scripture, of course. But he tells John unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. We ought to give quick heed to these words. These things, saith he. There's more than just one thing that God has to say to the pastor and to these people in Ephesus. But we must take the divine order that we find in Scripture. And the initial emphasis is on the author. The one whose message is coming through the messenger, John. He, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. I remember as a child singing that song, he's got the whole world in his hand. I thank God that he has his churches, his church members, his pastors in his hand. I thank God that he has his children in his hand. And God the Father has his hand around God the Son. And we are kept and we are sealed by the Spirit of God until the day of redemption. These things saith he, John says, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Ah, oh, you can just see the holiness of God. Can't you see it, beloved? Holding the seven stars in his right hand, walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Is Jesus walking in the midst of your local New Testament church pastor? Does he have liberty, if you would, to walk in the midst of your goings? Is he pleased in the presence? Is he pleased in your presence at what he views, at what he hears? Does he applaud? Convicting even to say such a thing. Does he applaud the content that we consume both online and offline? Does he amen the comments, the messages, the words that we speak to our family and friends and to our fellow laborers in the local church? Is he well pleased? If we're honest, perhaps we may often have to say no. Well, may judgment start at the house of God and at my house, in my life, in my home. May I take the axe to the tree and to the trees in the groves that I have allowed to grow up in the high places of my life, may I tear down the idols that I have erected spiritually. May I be done with them. May we be done with the idolatry. So that when he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, when he who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, when he has a word to speak, I may hear his voice. You may hear his voice and not be ignorant of he who speaks, seeking strange fire or other voices or the applause or approval of men, which is fleeting at best and meaningless in eternity. 
What does he say? You can hardly utter these next words and not find yourself perhaps on your face. Christ says, I know thy works. He knows our witnessing. He knows our church attendance. He knows our giving. He knows our ministries to others. And Christ says, thy labor. We so often applaud our diligence and disapprove and stand against laziness. Sometimes it's just failed self-righteousness, to be honest with you, in my own life. Of that attitude and sort, thank you God, I'm not like them. That's devilish. Were it not for the grace of God, we'd all be laying on the street under a cardboard box begging for money. But God has seen fit for that not to be the case in so many of our lives. Christ says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. So far, nothing sinful. Nothing sinful about working the works of him that sent me. Nothing sinful about laboring. If you find yourself laboring in the spirit and not in the flesh. And thy patience. If you're going to work with people, you must certainly need to be patient. And Christ goes on. How thou canst not bear them which are evil. You need not look around. Long at all. Locally. Internationally. Spiritually. Politically. Socially. Economically. Religiously. And find them which the scripture says are evil. Who says they're evil? Who says that's evil? Well, I mean, look at what Jesus says. And thou hast tried them, which say they are, they are apostles, and are not. I mean, immediately it goes from the evil to the so-called apostles. So-called sent ones. Messengers self-appointed of God. Evil. Messengers. And has found them. Scripture says it. Liars. These are people that we would certainly rank right alongside of. As Pilgrim identifies in the, as Bunyan identifies in the Pilgrim's Progress, Mr. Valiant for Truth. A fighter. Like our own beloved friend of long ago, Ian Paisley, a fighting fundamentalist, a biblicist, a warrior for Christ who stood against from the top of his head to his big toe, as he said, against them which are evil, who would stand against or instead of Jesus Christ, against them. I stand with Paisley. I like that word against. And these people would concur. They, they would amen. Our dear brother Paisley. And say we're against them too. We're against the world council of churches. We're against the apostate denominations. Whether they be Presbyterian. Baptist. Or any other sort if they're an apostate denomination. Spoke Mr. Paisley, the founder of the Free Presbyterian Movement. He clearly took his stand in 1969 and he said, I'm against them. I can hear his words echo out, I'm against the Pope. 
yeah, if there is anyone ever against popery and all of its man-made religiosity, it was our brother Paisley. He found those who were liars and called them such, as did John the Baptist, as did Jesus Christ. Make no mistake. And the scripture continues on in verse 3. Hast born. You've got under those yokes. You, you've borne the yoke in the heat of the day, if you would. And hast patience. I, I mean, the more you read this, the more sound this church sounds. But may we continue on. Christ isn't a unrighteous one to ignore all the work in our life, in their life, in our church, in their church, in your pastor, and in our pastor as of late or yet to come. And for my name's sake has labored. Now, now look at that. The scripture clearly explains and identifies the motive I mean, could it be any higher? Their motive was for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They wanted to bring glory to it. They wanted to preserve it there in Ephesus. The name of Jesus Christ meant something. The name of God meant something as they identified as Christians in a local New Testament church. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And the name above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's whose name they were laboring in and for. And I applaud them. That is so often, by way of personal testimony, not been true in my case. I would to God I could be spoken of in such manner by Christ. And look at what I mean. It could, if it, as if it could not get any better. Christ says, and hast not fainted. We live in a day of what seems to be continual fainting. I've lived long enough these few short 55 years to have seen men and women, young and old, including myself, have the call of God upon them in some form or fashion. We are all called to obey, brethren. It's not just some full-time ministry upon which God puts a call upon us. He has something for all His children to do. But, And I've seen people upon whom the Spirit of God rested on and the call of God was clear and evident. Who faint. The journey is too great for them and they find themselves having not received instruction regarding walking in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit, and they attempt, as have I so often, to labor in the flesh, for the flesh, and they faint. Christ says, and I'll leave you with this as I prepare to go to work, He says, nevertheless, all that being said, Christ says, I have somewhat against thee. Something against this church? These church members? This pastor? Because... Thou hast left thy first love until next time, beloved. <laughs>